Hello today, The Word Friends. We're so glad you're here, and we are excited to talk about the September issue of Today in the Word, which is titled, Who is God? Images of God in the Old Testament. And joining us today is um, Dr. Ryan Cook, who is professor of Bible at Moody Theological Seminary. Welcome, Ryan. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, we're glad you're here, and we I always love your studies. I love um, what you do, especially in the Old Testament. So it's kind of exciting that this focuses in once again, um, kind of a topical study, but through the Old Testament. When I came up with the idea for doing this uh, study on images of God, the, I originally wanted to do the whole Bible, Old and New Testament, and there's just so many images. I had to limit myself somehow. And so that's why I went with uh, in this is issue, at least, images just related to the Old Testament. Yeah, and we did try to contain it because you're right, over and over in the Bible, in order to help us understand who God is, because God is other, God is something we are not, um, the, the biblical authors compare God to different things. How did you um, originally think of this topic? Do you remember? Yeah, so it really came from my own, just reflecting on my own prayer life thinking about the fact that when I pray, I often use the same two images for God, thinking of mm -hmm. God as Father and God as Lord. And those are, of course, two really important images for God. But it kind of was nagging in the back of my mind, like that's not really a fully robust picture of who God is. There are a lot more images of God in the Old Testament, and it might help me in my own walk with God to try to incorporate some of those images more into my own prayer life or the way that I think and talk about God. Um, to have that more kind of fully robust uh, view of that. And so I took this study as an opportunity to grow in that area for myself and explore some of those different images that um, some of them are really common, but some of them are ones that we maybe don't think through that often. Yeah, there's some surprises in there. Yeah. Um, I like how you say in your introduction that we're visually minded people because I think we are, right? We're driven by visuals. Yeah, there was a really fascinating study I saw. So I've read a couple books recently on neuroscience, which is just kind of nerdy, I realize, but, and it's totally out of my field. But one of the things that uh, the, these authors point out is about 50% of our brain is dedicated toward visual processing, which it partially explains why. I mean, we're just sort of built to be moved by images. And yeah. the Old Testament, of course, doesn't like allow Israel to make an image, like a literal image to represent God, but it uses all kinds of verbal images for God. And I think that really appeals to that, how visual, how visually oriented we are. That has a, a way of communicating to us that I think is really impactful. One thing I like about this study that I think people will appreciate as you walk through all these different word pictures of God, it adds layers and layers of richness so that your portrait of him becomes increasingly complex and beautiful, really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's why I think it's important to to have these different images, to not think about God in just one way, but to have a robustly biblical view of all these different images that are used. There's this quote from a theologian I really love that says a, a metaphor, like a metaphor for God, is kind of like bringing two objects that aren't alike close mm. enough together, not so close that they touch, but close enough together that like a spark jumps between them and oh. illuminates the whole. And I, it's kind of a great metaphor to explain a metaphor. I really have appreciated I like that. that. Yeah. Something that yeah. illuminates that helps you start to, um, to spark, spark your imagination. You know, God created us with imagination, um, right. and an ability to perceive things. And so, so this is a great stretching exercise for September back to school month, I think. I had suggested in the in the um, devotional applications that if you're artistic, um, you, or if you just you know maybe you don't show your art to anybody, but you like to doodle, <laughs> um, that it might be fun to keep a little artistic journal this month and just um, and create some pictures, uh, the pictures we're talking about. Um, yeah. Oh, I hope people take you up on that. I would love love for not only for people to do that. What a great way to drive home these images from scripture. But I don't know if there's a way they could share it, like on the Facebook page or something like that, if people felt yeah. free. So it'd be really fun to look at the art that people create based on that. Definitely, yeah. Send them to us on our Facebook page or post it in our Facebook Today in the Word discussion group. 
um, that we have because we'd love to see what artistic people we have out there. I wanted to briefly say that you grouped these images into different categories. Can you tell us briefly about that? Yeah, so when I started working on this study, I was just looking at you know images from God in the Old Testament and I started putting them in different categories just as I was finding them. And so we really start off with images of God related to objects in creation. So you think of God like a, like a rock or as light or water. And then you move into God being compared with different animals. You have, you know, a lion we mentioned or a bear or a, mm -hmm. an eagle. And then we look at images of God and this is probably the largest category. Um, I called it occupational images of God. So God as a potter, God as a farmer, God as a king, God as a shepherd. And that's such a rich area, all these different human occupations that God gets compared to. And then we end looking at God being compared to some of our most intimate relationships like family. So God as a parent, God as a husband, um, being two of the most common um, kind of family metaphors for God. Yeah, so I think, yeah, each of these things will be interesting in their own right and and will have great impact on your own perception of God. But tell, I'm not going to supply that for you. What do you hope that our readers will walk away with? Well, my, my prayer is that readers will train their imagination to think about God biblically, that it will help them grow in their, their understanding of who God is, and through that, really deepen their relationship with God uh, because of that. And also, one of my prayers is that they'd be inspired to be able to communicate truth about who God is to others as well, maybe through creating their own kind of art. That would be a wonderful idea. Well, thank you for joining us, and I hope you will all just run over and get a sign up for our email. We do a free daily devotional email at todayintheword.org, um, or you can download our app, which is perfectly free also. And we do these push notifications that will remind you every day to read and study the Bible with us. And that is Today in the Word. And before you go, please, please, please like this video. That helps um, us share this with even more people. So thank you, Ryan. And we will catch up with you mid-month to talk uh, more about this. All right, I look forward to it.